Holy cow. So freaking pod. Meta, Meta episode. episode. And a high five. Oh, that was too loud. We can do it again quietly. Let's be quiet. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, so it's what's, been a while. What's We're... your name, though? Oh, and <laughs> you may have forgotten that I'm Cherry Doom. You would never forget that I'm Charles. I'm Chad, and you... yeah. Um, so it's been a while, sorry. We, we thought that it would be easier to record these when we were all in the same city, city but that is the That's opposite. not true. Wait, why don't we make this frown into a smile and say what we've been working on? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're working on a visual novel. That's fine. Yeah. Anyway, we're doing... Um, we do shit, too. Uh-huh. But okay, you can keep going. Because I was going to say, like, you worked on the book. I worked on my postcards. Chad's in grad school. These True. are all great reasons not to do a podcast. That's... Not really. No, I think they are. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my education is second to a, to a podcast about <laughs> a shitty book. Speaking of the shitty book, we have some listener questions from many, many... Um, they themselves Eons. form a sort of shitty book. <laughs> These are spanning a large amount of time, so some of them may not be relevant anymore, such as this first one. Has your opinion of Fifty Shades changed at all since you've had time away from the books? Are you still doing Fifty Shades Freed? That's still pretty relevant other than the Fifty Shades Freed part. Yeah, we have already done Fifty Shades Freed. If you missed it, go back. It's like the last episode we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does everyone feel? How's everyone's opinion of the book now that we've been not thinking about them for a long time? Um... Actually, I see the book in a lot more of, like, a depressing light than I did before. I used to be very happy, especially in the first book, just kind of, like, tearing it apart for it being bad. But then when you really analyze it, uh, it gets kind of disturbing. <laughs> and I kind yeah. that's kind of stuck with me. Yeah. I definitely agree. Yeah. I, I definitely have a lower opinion of the books than I ever did before. Um, even, like, when we were reading them. Just because the movie came out, and then Grey came out. But I think... Uh, you know, to sort of mitigate that, I don't, no one talks about it anymore at all since the movie came out. It's just completely died down. Like, there's still the fandom, but I don't think it's really much of a concern. Yeah, um, like, I, there didn't seem much to be much fanfare for Grey, I feel like. I'm yeah. sure it still sold millions or whatever, but... Maybe, we could check that. I checked some Amazon reviews and it was pretty much like, it was still pretty split, like, between one star and five star, but I feel like there were more of the lower star ratings than there ever were with like Fifty Shades. And I know, mm. I I feel like you can say for a fact that it did not sell as much. Probably not. I think people are hopefully getting tired of it. I wonder if E.L. James wrote that book thinking, and then eventually Grey will get made into a movie. Who would watch that? Like, it would literally be it the would first be the movie. It same fucking movie. But no, with a yeah. focus on Christian. Yeah, I mean, you would see what he's doing. Who <laughs> when, cares? When Anna's doing something else. But no one actually likes... To imagine themselves as Christians. Well, I guess they kind of want to think... They do that would be always... interesting if, like, if Grey was supposed to be for a male audience, because... It's totally not. Kind of... I don't know. It's, like, hyper-aggressive. It yeah, is hyper-aggressive. It is for, like, the Return of Kings crowd. Like, specifically, would probably like that movie. Yeah. No, but that's the thing. Like, he's, like, a... A lot of... Other than the monogamy. That we know about. Christians... <laughs> sort of like sensibilities are informed by being a sub before like the whole thing and we'll talk about later like he doesn't jack off at all which like in a way yes i don't know i feel i feel like that might be kind of a a power move yeah i was about to say like uh you get so much (laughs) pussy you don't need to jack off or no fap but (laughs) yeah um, (laughs) but no but that's informed because he he was a sub and like elena was like don't jack off so because it's a woman telling you not to jack off it's bad i feel like we're getting out of the questionnaire. Yeah. We may. We very well we, may. We may very well come back to the issue of jacking it uh, at the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, well, let's With see. me, it always comes back to jacking it. <laughs> You'll never... you always come if back If you didn't to know, jack. she wrote an entire book about jacking it. <laughs> entire is a strong word. Uh, okay, if you guys could... Cha- Sorry, this is another question, and I'm... I think this might be from Helmut Knetzer, but I forgot to write down the name of who, who wrote the question. Uh-huh. If you guys could change one word across all three books to pizza, what would it be? My personal choice is goddess, which is a good choice. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Um, I would change every curse word, uh, including crap, so it would be like, holy pizza. <laughs> I'm going to pizza you six ways from Sunday. Get in the mother pizzing car, Anda. Stasia. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't read that last one. Anastasia. Uh, my answer is similar to this one. I don't. I don't think one word is enough. I think if we could put all 
body words. <laughs> that would as be pizza. Yeah, yeah, that's like what I was saying. Thinking. Like he but... like he tenderly bites my pizza type things would be really good. Or like he he like flogs my pizza into oblivion. <laughs> that could get like very repetitive. I know. That would oh. be that would be well, great though. I'm it wouldn't of... get repetitive because the book's repetitive. Like keep this that's the problem. Well, I mean if you're saying body parts though, then those are gonna come into there are going to be a lot of body parts. Yeah, but the, the different ways that he treats her. With his pizza, and while well, his pizza holds my pizza. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, that's what I mean. True. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Not like just the... He gently licks my pizza with his pizza. Well, maybe only like <laughs> certain, like, I, I wouldn't want every part. All of Anastasia's parts. I like that, though, because I like to imagine them just like holding out pizzas and just rubbing, met, two yeah, pizzas yeah, rubbing them against each other. <laughs> just okay, centrally wait. massaging their pizzas together. <laughs> Let's try this out. Um... We should try to do a Fifty Shades Mad Lib at some point. He oh, leans over, releases my pizza, and pulls me upright so that I'm practically sitting on him. His hands move up to my pizzas. You said hands oh. instead of pizzas. Shit. His pizzas move up to my pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> and he palms them both. Does palms count? No, that's he, a verb. No, it doesn't because it's a verb. Yeah. Tugging gently on my pizzas. I groan, tossing my pizza back against his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. He nuzzles my pizza, biting down as he flexes his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to do for now, but okay. you get the idea. Yeah. It's that, that actually is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, like, originally I was thinking something like that, but what I, what I put down for my answer is kind of similar to both of them. Not one word, but any time an adjective is in front of, like, stare or glare or gaze. So it would be, like, his pizza gaze, his intense pizza gaze. His, his, <laughs> his uh, pizza, pizza pizza gaze. Yeah, his pizza-ing <laughs> stare. Um, but it's not really that funny. Um, well, maybe it is. I really think that as funny as pizza is, there aren't that many ways to insert it where it doesn't get like super dumb. The body thing is really funny because yeah. it is really funny to imagine pizzas just like Christian Grey is just bought a million pizzas and they're just wasting them all by like mashing them into a mush against each other. There's just like three or four whole pizzas between their bodies as they're like rubbing up against each other. Just we could do like a user submitted Mad Lib where we just post like short sections to like Twitter or something. Mm -hmm. And then ask people to send in submissions where we have the blanks. And then we can, like, read them or just post the uh, best, funniest ones. Mm -hmm. would we, we would give out, like, the the parts of speech, right? Yeah, yeah. We would just blank out yeah, and tell like, them what it's missing. Yeah, like, just like, like Mad Libs, yeah. Take, pick a passage from the book and publish it with the uh, appropriate, like, blank. And what The way Mad Libs works is that you... There's, like, a tiny word under the space that says... Yeah, no, no, what I'm saying is you don't see the Mad Lib before you... Right, it's just like, look no, at no, it. No, so no. we would oh, publish right, right, the right, list right. of things yeah, we need, yeah, and then yeah. we'd plug them in and read them. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, you're right. Um, anyway, anyway, next question. Um, okay. You want to read this one, Charles? Sure. Hello there. I know you're between books right now, but I figured I should send in my questions before I forget them. First off, I'm a big fan of the podcast. I started listening to it when it first came out. Then I stopped when episode 5 came out, just because I became too busy for it. I started re-listening from the beginning about a month ago, and I am currently on episode 15, so I apologize if any of these questions have been answered in any of the other meta episodes. Anyway, on to the questions. First for Chad, has reading this book given you any interest in BDSM? And for Charles and Cherry Doom, have either of you ever wanted to get back into or become more active in the BDSM scene because of reading this book? Um, not really. I haven't really developed any real interest, other than general intellectual curiosity, I guess, because I'm boring. Um, <laughs> and also Fifty Shades makes everything really unappealing. Um, reading this book is not a good way to get interested in it. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, for me, uh, have I wanted to get back into or become more active in BDSM? Not at all. Uh, nothing in this book was presented in a way that made me nostalgic for the olden times of kink exploration. <laughs> But, like, even that was, like, I, I didn't, how do I put this? I didn't seek those things out. I had a partner who was interested in those things, so I kind of was, like, okay. Because, like, I'm a good and game and game and girl. Girl, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, ga I'm a good gamer girl. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Um, like, it made me recognize, I guess, certain things that are hot, quote, unquote. But it did not do it in a way that made them appealing. Yeah. Oh, there's a second part of that question. It's for you. So, uh, Charity, how has reading this book and doing this podcast affected your own writing? <laughs> Everyone. Has doing this podcast affected the way you read other books? I actually don't know if that's a separate question or not. No, it's not. It's Yeah, that's from the same person. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I think so. All right. Well, okay. Then I'll say my answer. 
Um, I really did not enjoy any of the books. Um, there were some fun, funny things that came up in the books, and it was fun to do the podcast. But I think now, when I'm like reading anything, including like really, really dry <laughs> academic things, I just didn't. Sometimes I'll stop and think, like, you know what? This isn't Fifty Shades of Grey, and uh, that makes it a lot better. It doesn't matter what it is. There are a few exceptions, and most of those are books that I just hate, which I don't want to ever read again, which we've talked about before. I think also certain phrases now are just forever associated with Fifty Shades or just ingrained in my mind. Really innocuous, normal phrases that were just overused in the book, like um, X was all X and X, like um, the lobby was all stone and marble or steel and concrete. And like, that's totally fine. People say that all the time, but it's just used so much that it just ticks off something in my mind where I'm like, oh, Fifty Shades, I hate Yellow James. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so for example, I was reading Reem D by Neil Stevenson really recent, recently, and he used a couple of uh, phrases that Yellow James uses that she uses as stock phrases, and he uses because he sometimes uses colloquialisms because writers do that, and I just, it they, they jumped off the page at me as like, oh, man, this is a terrible thing to do, and I had to stop and go, no, it's fine. This is the first time he's used it in this 900-page book. It's okay. Um, for writing, I definitely think about some of the things, especially making sure I don't use Murmured if I can help it, which I usually can. Uh, and I often ask myself, is this really better than Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh, no. In a world where Fifty Shades of Grey exists, does the universe need my work? <laughs> I would say the answer to that is I probably yes. yes. In a yeah. world where Fifty Shades exists, there needs to be <laughs> many, many more things that displace it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and as for reading, um, it's it's nice to not be reading Fifty Shades of Grey, but that's pretty much all I was reading for a while. Like I, I feel like I don't read enough um, because there's so much other media to consume, and I'm a. Um, uh, <laughs> but like I've been, I've been, I've been reading more lately and it's been like a pleasure it's like i can i'm like finding myself like reading multiple chapters at a time i <laughs> never wanted to do that with 50 years of I'm like wow i'm really i'm really getting through this book and i'm enjoying it even though it's like a lame book like ready player one <laughs> or um a weird book like sorrows which i want to talk to you about a Ooh. little bit <laughs> good um even though i'm only like 30 pages in yeah but yeah yeah <laughs> that's okay. a real interesting book <laughs> yeah we'll talk about it a little later because yeah. It's like an anti Fifty Shades in some ways. Cuz like it's just as amateurish, but it's yeah. actually got better writing and Yeah, see like, that's the thing. Like stuff happens. Again, I don't want to get too into it now. Uh Sorrows is a self-published book that I found in a free community library and uh it even has like the author like wrote in the jacket of the book and she's like, "Tell me what you think. I've got a website." But I couldn't bring myself to do it because like unlike Fifty Shades of Grey, which is written by somebody who's now very rich and a complete hack this person, um, I can tell that she cares very much about her work and is trying to make it interesting for people. It's just, it's just not good writing as well. Yeah. It actually, like, if you, like, when you're reading it, I haven't read it, but I read passages and mm -hmm. Charles read some of it to me on a very long drive. Um, yeah, you, like, you can actually tell that she probably, like, thought about what was happening and revised things, unlike Yale James, who just a shitted everything bit. out. <laughs> well, I mean, it's to the point where, like, she she probably had an idea in mind for the overall like yeah she definitely of the book. had an idea for the overall structure of the book that's for certain and I and I suspect she wanted to make it a serial thing as well but yeah let's not talk about that too much I might no. even have to cut it out because nobody knows what the fuck sorrows is um, I did take a picture of it that's true um, anyway uh, what's your answer? my answer uh, I answered but this might be a lie it has not affected the way I read books whatsoever that's nice um yeah, that is nice it has I didn't. I wasn't doing this at the time when I entered this question, but I've edited a couple of things since. And when I see certain things, and don't get mad, <laughs> like if I if I if I see the word like assault in a um, sex scene, like not not like in a scary way, like I'm triggered or anything, but like if, like I continue my assault on her titties, like I'm just like <laughs> uh, Fifty Shades, no. But like I don't know if that's actually like a bad thing to say when you're writing a sex scene. I think that it's just like. I think it's this just a cliche me. thing, that, and that's and that. Was it in Fifty Shades? Did they he ever use assault? He continues my assault. On, his assault on my. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure he says she's like I'm something pretty... like sweet assault or something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they, that it gets dropped, but I think that's just like an erotica thing and not. Fifty Shades. I, it thing. is. That doesn't offend me. Okay, well, the last question's for me. Finally, for Charles, I heard that you read all the books. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that specifically for the podcast, or had you read them previously for some other reason? If so, what was that reason? I think 
Okay, my answer is when we were in podcast conception stages, like I think one day we were just all talking about it. I remember what led to maybe doing this podcast was we were doing readings of parts of the book and I was adding sound effects like this <laughs> and like recorder noises to like simulate oral sex <laughs> and stuff like that. I, I think it, I believe it's boathousesexfuck.wav. <laughs> But I'm really glad that I haven't published that in any way. Um, uh, so, but like after I did those, I was like, okay, well maybe I better read it. So I knocked it out really quick, like just before we did anything at all, I just read it and I was like, okay. But like, that's common for me. I read really fast and I'm the sort of person who likes reading bad literature anyways. Um, Charity mentioned she tweeted a picture of Sorrows and like Ready Player One in the third book, which is about like a a big bad motorcycle man or something. It's like Fifty Shades with Motorcycles. Yeah, it's like Fifty Shades with Motorcycles. I provided two oh, of those books. Just like two motorcycles having sex? No, <laughs> no. It's really good, actually. I kind of want to read it. But um, anyways, I provided two out of three of those bad books, and that's sort of representative Technically, of... she supplied one of the books that I supplied to her. <laughs> well, I like suggested it, and I finished reading both of them. Okay. In a pretty quick time yeah. period. So yeah, like um, I, I like to read bad literature, but I like to read good literature, too. So it's not weird for me to have read Fifty Shades of Grey. Was my I thought that you just read them. Like, uh, I thought that's what you'd said. But maybe really? I, yeah. No, no it definitely was after we talked about the idea maybe of Maybe I was confusing you with podcast. Chair, yeah. No. How you, could you ever? How could you? Did, yeah. Because you didn't read them in advance, right? Before we did the podcast? Or did you read them specifically for the podcast? I read them for the podcast. Okay. I, did I don't not know what I was thinking. Uh, Chad. Oh, uh, I just misread the question. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to. Uh, finally, thank you for looking at my questions and putting us on such great and enjoyable podcast. Um, Patrick. Says Patty. Thanks, dude. Thank thanks. Yeah. thanks yeah. for your question. Yeah, thanks for your questions. <laughs> All right. I found your podcast a few days ago, and I've been gorging on your delicious podcast. I'm only on chapter 17 so far. This, of course, has resulted in you all showing up in my dreams. Specifically, Charles and Charity were searching for supplies in the zombie apocalypse and lived with Chad in a high school. You guys shared the gym with us for a few days until your group move, until our group moved on. I have no idea what you guys look like, but in my dreams or anything to go by, try post-apocalyptic fashion. You were all hot as hell, perhaps as hot as the blazing, burning, immolating fire of Christian Grey's eyes. Two points. One, I don't know if you found an actual English person to discuss uh, Americans, but I live in the UK and subject uh, your podcast on 2 BDSM enlightened Englishmen. I would love to help. Uh, too late, sorry. <laughs> uh, a few times you've wandered over some mechanics, uh, but it was definitely Americans. The book is full of them to the point where it's super jarring for me as an American living indefinitely on this tiny island. Secondly, you almost certainly have considered it in later in the series, but I feel you should spend more effort reading Christian's behavior as intentional manipulation. Definitely did yeah. that. Uh, yeah. You seem very understanding toward him at points, giving him the benefit of the doubt. I read him as doing all of these things he does intentionally. A lot of his weird mood swings and non-characteristic actions can be attributed to pitch-perfect abuser behavior, and not just bad writing. Of course, E.L. James says that there's no abuse at all in this book, and why are we to mistrust the word of God? Uh, also, Trady, I love you. Thanks. <laughs> you guys make me want to get back into Twitter. You guys uh, just got to the Americans in Chapter 17, and Obgyn is totally the way we write it here. <laughs> Don't know why. Thanks, says Trina. Oh yeah, sorry. Thanks, Trina. <laughs> Obstetrical gynecologist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think all three of us are at least very fashionable, if not perfect, HB10. What's an HB10? Hot. Bitch, 10. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Well, HB10 is like, like a 10 a pencil. Out of 10. Huh? What? As high oh. as an HB10. No, it, okay, well, the pencil thing has to be <laughs> no. H or B. Yeah, H B10 or, or H10. Well, there is an HB. It's there, right, no, but there's HB, but you can't right, have different numbers. You can have different numbers of HB. But, yeah. The fuck are you guys talking about? Oh, okay, pencil, wait. pencil lit uh, strength. Oh, okay. They, it, there's a range from. Yeah, uh, I feel like I've seen it before. This is HB. H. Yeah, the HB is the, is a, the. What's the other name? The 2B is the common school pencil? No, HB is common school pencil. Oh, right, okay. Guys. <laughs> anyway, they stand, for, okay. they stand for hard and. Bold. Really? No, I don't no, know. I don't think so. Well, I just learned about this. How would I know? Hard and the. I don't remember. I don't know. Anyway, for. it doesn't but, matter. Um, but but H is hardness and uh like. I think it is hard and bold. Maybe. Yeah, I'm guessing. But anyway, anyway, let's not get into it, please. Pencil discussion aside. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, I don't know how my co-casters feel, uh -huh. but I wouldn't mind hosting a special episode, interviewing English people slash those who are good at noticing Americans like yourself. I think I might have asked my friend Bumalore, uh, from. 
something awful on Twitter to do it, but I didn't follow up since we were so focused on just getting the books themselves over with. Plus, I think we did an okay job pointing stuff out. We didn't always know, but that was alright, because we're Americans. Uh, I feel like. Um, it definitely would be work for whoever I would want to interview. They would have to give an analytic read of the book and come up with discussion points. That's a lot of work. I feel like us doing that is more convenient than having somebody else come on and do it. Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I know I initially tried to read Christian as benevolent since, because he was E.L. James's fantasy man, it's highly unlikely that she wanted him to be a piece of shit. <laughs> Unless she's like turned on by that. I guess I want to ask you, Chad and Cherry Doom, do you agree with me? Is it part of the fetish that he's literally abusive or like, what? Like, because clearly she's not like, I want this guy to be shit. I don't want my readers to like him. She wants readers to like him. Right. So I don't think she intended it. I think that she legitimately I, doesn't see it. I agree 100%. But like, do we, does she misconstrue things that are abusive? To be sexy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess that's that... a better question. Um, last thing I will say is you should get back into Twitter. Uh, it's my favorite social media, and I'll talk to you if you at me. Because I like it. I hope they make it. They're on chapter 17. I hope they stick with it. Stick with yeah. it. <laughs> Don't give up. <laughs> um, I, I agree that I tended to be pretty forgiving to E.L. James because, like you said, I feel like, you know, um, she was trying to just make him, like, tragic and damaged and... Mm -hmm. and uh, but also powerful and, and um, dom dom domineering. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, it's, and you're supposed to come to like him at the end, but, or come to understand him and see that, oh, he's not doing this on purpose or something, he's just damaged, but like, it had the opposite effect for us. Like, we felt like as we went on, it was even more and more intentional. Um, yeah, and if you go by Death of the Author rules, I feel like. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's un unequivocal, if that's the word. I don't think so. Um, Unequivocally abusive. Yeah. Pretty much everything he did, I was thinking this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like if I were to read Grey, I would just be mad all the time. <laughs> I think for the, what little I've at least seen of Grey, it totally highlights his shitty personality. And I don't understand why James thinks this is sexy. I I I. Or good. I, well, I like, th I think maybe the arc of that book is supposed to be him becoming a better guy, but it's <laughs> not. Nah. Really, it just makes it sound like he's getting obsessed with Anastasia. Yeah. And, like, I think. So, we talked about it before on the podcast, but, like, I agree with Cherry Doom, and, um, and I agree with. Charles, like, we all basically think that he is an abuser. And, we, and, like, Cherry Doom and I just said, I don't think E.L. James intended that, which is why she doesn't think there's abuse, because she's incapable of seeing past the way, like... Because she didn't write that, abuse. Right. Unquote. She's in, like, the frames that she's thinking, which is she has the classic, like, you know, um, just temperamental, uh, mer mercurial guy who seems to have, like, intense mood swings and, like, Anastasia wants to, like, bring out of his dark brooding shell. There's all these cliches that she's writing through that are grounded in these like really terrible and like normalized ideas about male behavior and masculinity and that to her is what is sexy and to many people that's like their entire idea of what a man is and it also is playing against the idea of the bad boy because you know christian is rich and powerful but rather than being like you know a lower income lower uh, social status biker from the wrong side of the tracks or whatever you've got him as ultra rich and powerful but still with all these bad boy qualities like He's stalking Anna. He does whatever he wants. Like, he's really, quote-unquote, alpha and challenges, like, every guy in the room when they're near Anastasia. I have... It's all this territorial bullshit behavior. I, we can just round this up really quick, and sorry if that's offensive to say, by saying, um, for... Okay, think of... From Anastasia's point of view, Christian is a prize to be won. If he's difficult to get, which is the whole mer mercurial thing, and... If he is in such a place of societal and literal power and like material power that, um, shit. <laughs> if he's in such a place of power that he can use that to oppress others as like the signifier of that power, that's what makes him like alluring. I mean, she was not thinking of it this way almost certainly when she wrote him, but that's kind of what it is. It's like if you have somebody who sort of like embodies all these characteristics, you tend to only see the good side of that, which is that like, oh, he's rich, he can provide for me, whatever. But it sort of like discounts all the bad things that come with that. Toxic masculinity, if you will. 
So Well, that's interesting, too, because I don't actually think until the end of the series that Anastasia is actually objectifying Christian. No, she's like, not. It's But it's not, like, objectification. It's in terms of, like, the economy of the relationship. Like, what do I get out of this? And what can I give up for it? And that's, and I mean, that's the struggle is the economy of the relationship. And I don't no. want to talk well, about I this much more because you didn't write down your answer, Chad. Why are you talking so much? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I know that's really mean, but, like, time is money. All right, well, moving on. Uh, this is from Rob P., and he says... So first, I'd like to thank you all for using my Duke Nukem impersonation of Christian Grey quotes in the past episode. Uh, it was really funny hearing them over the Duke Nukem theme. I had, I had trouble finding, like, is this the real Duke Nukem theme? <laughs> when I was looking that up. Um, <clears throat> and i try to remember who it was by. Surely people know this. I don't know. The band. But anyway, um, my question is then, on the first meta episode, I said the Fifty Shades of Grey movie would be miserable softcore porn if they stuck to the source material, and that's exactly what happened for the most part. But I really liked everyone's ideas for how they would have done the movie. So for the movie sequels, what would each of your versions of the sequels be? For me, since E.L. James' husband is writing them, I really hope it's just flat out John Waters-esque camp with all of E.L. James' horrible grammar and lines thrown in. At least the movie will also be unintentionally hilarious. Also, some fun facts. Seamus McGarvey, who shot Fifty Shades of Grey, also shot Atonement and Godzilla 2014. And Anne V. Coates, who edited Fifty Shades of Grey, edited Lawrence of Arabia. Go figure. Leaders, baby, Rob P. Um, your John Waters idea of Rob P. is very amusing. Um, I would have the next two movies be an absolute clusterfuck. <laughs> I have put here in my notes, I'll describe on a whim when we actually <laughs> record, so here's what I thought of. Um, I would, though it is a movie, I would have it filmed in front of a live studio audience in a sitcom <laughs> style, and I would try to like cram it into like a sitcom plot. <laughs> That's the best way I can think of to make this movie like as even like worser than it is. Oh, God, I'm thinking of like, I'm I'm definitely thinking of like, of all of Christian's like shitty things. Then when when Anna <laughs> goes, yeah, when Anna goes, oh Christian, and everyone goes, ha 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 ha. I would also like That's to have in the book. Yeah, like, well, yeah, it it'd does. be really great to see that actually in the movie. But <laughs> That's, I think it's a great idea, and I also I'm not sure how you would work the sex scenes into that, but seeing sex in a sitcom would be pretty surreal, I think, especially a live studio audience sitcom. Yeah. Well, you just have it be uh, sitcom sex where it's just like they're both under the covers. No. And... No explicit. <laughs> Okay, uh, so on Showtime. I would <laughs> no. They don't have a live studio audience on Showtime. You could do it though. I'm just I saying. Could, like, you could, but it's show, not a precedent. You could show the nudity on Showtime, yes. not on network TV. Right, <laughs> but I, th I think it would be <laughs> funny if like it was just like full on like penetration, and the audience was still just going unsimulated Ooh. sex, Ooh. or like oh. yeah, like unsimulated sex, like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh. like, um, <laughs> Chad. Um. I personally feel like the movie was a failure, like even as far as softcore porn goes, because usually people on screen in softcore porn feel like they have chemistry, partially because they're actually having sex. Um, like watching the Fifty Shades movie, it didn't seem like either of the two actors or any of the crew wanted to be there doing this. Um, and it, like you could, for me, I could feel it. Like it, it felt to me like it was passionless and no one cared. Um, and, you know, porn also sort of acknowledges that its main goal is to be, like, for sex enjoyment. Whereas Fifty Shades also had aspirations of being, like, a good movie or an interesting movie. And it failed miserably, in my opinion. You know, also, by everyone's accounts, on the, like, you know, more going underneath the surface sort of thing, everyone except E.L. James basically knew that the movie was shitty. E.L. James was the only one under any illusions that, like, it was going to have some sort of deepness to it, I think. Do you think her husband knew that it was a shitty movie? Probably. And like her family. Because I looked, remember we went to Best Buy and we looked at the Fifty Shades of Grey DVD and we looked on the back and it said that a special feature of this DVD was friends and family of Fifty Shades. Like, do you think they're going around like to your friends and stuff and family, ostensibly, and being like, so what do you think of this movie? And they're like, it made her a lot of money. That's good. Maybe really? it's actually a, a featurette about the friends and family of oh, like Christian, Christian and something. Yeah. No, I don't know if it yeah, was. It maybe. sort of didn't look like it, but they, you know, didn't get any screen time. <laughs> well, none of us are gonna buy it to find out. Um, <laughs> yeah. The last thing I have to say is that, like, uh, there's like, oh yeah. So did so McGarvey was the DP. I'm guessing. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, you know, everyone's gotta eat. 
Yeah, it's, oh yeah, I forgot that part of my answer. Like, I'm not really shocked by um, those mentions of those people because, like, somebody's got to work on these movies, and especially it's, like, a big movie, too, or a blockbuster movie. Um, you say it's a total failure, but you can't deny that a lot of the target audience did think it was hot, and therefore a success in what it set out to do. Maybe we are the wrong ones? Did you ever think about that? Yeah, what if we're the wrong ones? What if we're undermining uh, women? <laughs> I kind of fucking doubt it. I mean, no, I, I feel so. like the same people who well, but, liked the, like this loved uh, Magic Mike, and I think maybe they. What's Magic Mike? But Magic Magic Mike is the Channing Tatum, Matthew McConaughey male strip. Oh, I want to see that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, too. I screamed. I'm, I see that on the. Um, but like these are these are movies. These are like sexy movies for women, and they love it. But there's actual porn for women too. Yeah. I don't think ladies know about that. Yeah, but of like... Of course they do. But counterpoint, two of us are women. This is porn for women, though. No, this is, what this it is, is erotica this, for women. This, this podcast is, is porn for women. No, it's not. Um, I like, was gonna say, counterpoint, we are women. True. We didn't like the movie. It didn't I mean, that's true, us. but like, the target audience liked it. Yeah. But this was not try trying to appeal just to the target audience. It was trying to, like, no, bring... I think that it was trying to bring Fifty Shades into like an even more mainstream, like that was the original goal with the movie and they failed fucking miserably, partially because Gil James would not approve any of the script changes to her book. I mean, I guess you could say that like the broader audience would be the ladies and their boyfriends and yeah. husbands? I mean, okay, so is Transformers a movie for Transformers fans, like of the cartoon? Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> Like, no, it's, it's, if a know. movie is getting released as a Hollywood movie, like, it's not trying to appeal necessarily specifically. Maybe that's, like, a large part of the market they're trying to tap, but they want to, like, they want it to do well. And Fifty Shades also did bad at the box office. Okay, like, I was... Like, it was a failure. Really? Yeah. Huh. It, it did well the first week, and then it's... Yeah, the first it's week, totally and then Like, the Valentine's weekend, when it came out, it was... It was pretty high on the box office like openings, but then it just totally dropped off after that. Right, which is pretty uncommon for movies, as I understand. But, okay, to, to sort of, like, step back and look at this problem in a little bit of a grander view. Um, the problem with the movie is not that it didn't appeal to a wider audience, but that it uses kind of like problematic ways of doing that, which are, you know, not good. And like, yes, you can, I, and we talked about it many, many times before in this podcast, you can find things that are problematic sexy, but the context of that has to be well established. Um, i.e. you shouldn't mistake this for abuse, or it should be very explicit, like what the author is setting out to do, and it's not. Or the movie maker, whatever. It's the same person. I have another counterpoint. Two really? other books that were adapted to movies that actually increased the audience for both franchises. Twilight and Hunger Games. Harry Potter! Because, and Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> true. a lot of people were already reading Harry Potter, though. Whereas, yeah, I feel like Twilight was well was widely read, but not even... It became even bigger after Twilight movies. Yeah. And Hunger Games the same way. More people read the Hunger Games because of the movie than uh, yeah. the movie okay. was made. Yeah, like, I see. Hunger Games has a younger demographic of people reading it, though. Then, now it has an older demographic. Well, it, does, it has an older popular. demographic too. But yes. I, my point is that like it was well made enough of a movie, and then it was entertaining, even though it was you know it's not technically softcore porn or whatever. <laughs> but like it increased the audience. The movie okay, I got, expanded. Okay. All right. Okay. As for the next two movies, I think they should be just make everything bigger and more melodramatic. Like um, my example for this is that Elena should be the most evil person ever depicted. She should be stepping on puppies in every scene and, like, breaking glasses over the heads of her lowly assistants, etc. And, like, <laughs> spitting in Anna's face. <laughs> Wait! Oh my god! What if this movie was, like, the Fast and the Furious of erotica movies? <laughs> or romance movies, I should say. Like, lots of, like, stunts. Oh my god, I would watch that movie! You just have, like, Mick G-style, like, CG people as the camera, like, zooms around and into their organs when they're fucking. <laughs> Oh, that's awful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's kind of like the movie Crank or whatever. I know Mick G hasn't worked on the movies in a while, but that's what I want. But like, yeah, like um, lots of like fight scenes and stunts and stuff like that. Or like a Michael Bay-esque, like... I was thinking more of like a Hong Kong cinema type, like... So like John Woo style, like pigeons as they're yeah. fucking and like slow <laughs> yeah. motion. Oh, yeah. And you get like, they're like dual fisting condoms and... <laughs> And what's that movie that the ho did you did either of you see the heroic trio movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, like when the scientist is like trying to, he's like dying, but he's trying to work on his science, and all the papers go like flying yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Like There's also some like nice like fast camera movements and low angle shots from Hong Kong movies that I'd love to see. Yeah, exactly. Where, and like the chiaroscuro, like the good chiaroscuro lighting. Anyway, this is all like real technical anyway, film stuff. Anyway, all right. Yep. Uh, from Tumblr, what do you think? Something like what? God. 
Why do you think something like Fifty Shades of Grey gains mainstream popularity? But most people probably have not heard of most of the erotic that Charidium has recommended in earlier episodes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this first because I feel it's important. The erotic kind that I look for is extremely narrow and specific, it and is. that's why. Uh... Um, like I search specifically like for like robot or ghost porn. <laughs> Gay historical fiction and <laughs> see, I was confused because I didn't know if they were talking about Wittershins or th which is the gay romance Wittershins. It has like some kind of Illuminati cult subplot. Yeah, and or did did you mean Chrome, which I also read and which I think actually did have a wider audience than is implied here. Um, I mean, I those are just like specific, very specific, like weird niche things, and yeah. this is this is made to um, have universal appeal. Especially because, like I've mentioned before, she has this checklist of things that are hot that she wants to include. Yeah, plus it's, like, hetero. Like, that's the other yeah. thing, too. Yeah, Not Definitely. that gay porn isn't popular. Like, think of, like, Tom of Finland or whatever. Of course, that's art, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the hetero stuff is Or Goro Fujita large is the part bar artist. Yep. Um, I think Fifty Shades is romance masquerading as erotica. In no, po in no small part because it's alternate universe fanfiction of Twilight, which is a hugely popular young adult romance. Uh, romance has always, always... Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> romance has always been super popular. Uh, all who identify as women or non-masculine in our culture are pretty much guaranteed to come into contact with abusive men at some point in our lives. Uh, or various points, really. Uh, so a narrative that says that um, an abusive man who's an, uh, an otherwise perfect normative mayonnaise money god uh, can be uh, if something says that he can be fixed and normalized that's like the ultimate escapist fantasy like to say like oh there's a shitty guy but you can change him which doesn't reflect reality really in any way I don't feel maybe that's like a really pessimist thing to say but that's how I feel um, skip this next part I'm good person reading a romance is easier for me than reading a straight up erotica I think sexual relationships are made more interesting by the interpersonal oh interpersonal interpersonal <laughs> dynamic that they entail uh even straight up erotica can achieve that kind of thing by um using certain types of relationships so like for example um it can be taboo or it can be not like doctor patient uh is not really gross brother and sister is pretty fucking gross doctor patient can be gross yeah it can be gross but like if it's just like the straight up like i'm a doctor let's fuck like <laughs> just like the really boring like <laughs> yeah but the the reason that part of it is well, never mind. But anyway, let me continue. It's the like abuse of power. other examples. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. There's a power dynamic Which is there. Gross. But however, brother and sister has like a sort of horizontal power dynamic. Gay guy and straight guy also a horizontal power <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> what? Bro and sis. It depends who's older. There's always a power dynamic there. It depends who's the man. Always power. What if they're twins there. and they fuck each other? That because that is a. That's like that's the a only completely different sort of like time. It's okay. Quote, no, it's quote. never okay. <laughs> I mean, sorry if you like incest porn. It's okay to like incest porn, but no, it's that relationship is not okay. I agree. Um, but then there's gay guy, straight guy. Uh, there's even porn uh, that's targeted towards like, oh, I have a cool girlfriend or like a random hookup. Like these are all things that like you, you the reader, project your own complex interactions and context of your own life onto this simplified bond. So the writer doesn't actually have to make much of a plot for you to get like interested in because like there's al already that kind of like typical thing and whether it's a power dynamic or it's just like a idealized bond it's yeah doesn't require the high amount of detail that apparently 50 shades of gray did that's it <laughs> okay uh, my answer is really long so whoa holy it. shit yeah maybe we just publish it or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be good actually um, uh, yeah, for the- I agree with Charles about preparing romance over erotica. I enjoy the build-up and the will-they-won't-they they type of shit. Uh, if they bone too soon, I feel like the tension is gone, which is how I felt with Fifty Shades of Grey. But it took seven um, chapters. All that was left was <laughs> shitty arguments and fake-ass drama. Uh, that said, I've written plenty of fanfic that was pretty much strictly erotica. I guess it's more fun to write than read for a certain sort of person, mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. Uh, who wants to read this? Chad hasn't read anything. You want to read? You want to read Chad? No. Okay. <clears throat> hey yo, hey yo, it's Dvac. I'm writing in about the Fifty Shades movie as someone who was actually in an emotionally abusive relationship with a narcissistic parody of a human being. It's really loud. Uh, this was the most triggering piece of media I've seen since I broke things off with him three years ago. 
So it does actually read as abuse in the movie, especially the I'm not what you want scene, <laughs> which is a conversation I've actually had. But it was also tremendously healing to see Anastasia standing up to him at the end, says Devious Vacuum. Um, I am me, Charles. I'm a veteran of a abusive romantic relationship. It was, uh, I'm not going to talk about the nature of it, but it wasn't really wholly physical. Like, there's no hitting, but there's other stuff. Uh, I was only deeply bothered and intrigued by the part where Christian satanically and sweatily lays into her with a belt. Uh, <laughs> but, like, it was, like, bothered and intrigued. I was kind of like, why would they put this in? But at the same time, I was like, oh my god, no, this is awful. Um... I think it gets more explicitly like abuse toward the middle and end of the movie. That said, I think the movie does a great job of sanitizing the abusive aspects of the book. I also was really proud of Anna at the end of the movie like you were, Dvac. But particularly when she stands up to him in the red room and says, like, you won't do that to me again. Like, uh, knowing what comes in the next installation, however, ruins it for me. Um, one kind of pities Jamie Dornan's portrayal, in a way, of Christian. Uh, his Christian is a black and white thinker living in an ivory tower who doesn't know how to have a loving relationship. And that is actually really sad. And maybe that is the sad aspect of, like, all relationships like this, is that the person who's abusing is never getting real trust and love. It's always sort of at a cost that they're enforcing. Um, my best friend forever, Edward, who saw the movie in real life, Rather, I saw the real I saw the movie in real life with my two best friends, Edward and Natalie. Uh, they had a really great analysis. Um, quick refresher, because I did talk about it in the movie yet, but I don't want to focus on it too much. Uh, movie Christian has a philosophy. It's kind of a life ethos. If you choose for something bad to happen to you, and you compartment you compartmentalize that bad event, you've completely taken control of your life. And if you think about it, it makes sense given his childhood background and his subsequent adult success, which is steeped in SM dynamics. Uh, movie Christian is trying to free Anna in like the same way that he was free, but he doesn't realize that no one else has that specific background for his life, so really what he's doing is abusive. He's not giving her any kind of weird deterministic freedom that he thinks he is uh, through sexual and emotional debasement, like, because she's never fully consenting or truly understanding like why he's doing that. If she did, she could actually have the choice that he's pretending that she has. Uh, he has a hard time seeing that other people are not like him. His selfish clinging and rationalization of this worldview in the face of contrary evidence, no less, is the impetus for their relationship getting really fucked up. But it already was fucked up from the beginning, so I don't know why I put it that way. Um, he's an abuser for the, nor the normal abuser reason. I think the universal reason is being selfish or thinking that you deserve more, like, if you're gonna balance it out. Like, instead of saying, oh, my relationship's 50-50, it would be like 75-25 or something. Uh, it's out of, but his selfishness, he's thinking, is this misguided idea that he can help his partner and, and impact her life for the better by demanding a lot from her. Uh, the book Christian is not really the same. I think he's way more demented and selfish and non-benevolent. I just actually wrote a thousand words about this the other day because somebody asked me to compare Fifty Shades of Grey and the source material Twilight because they were asking who's worse, Edward or Christian. And if you want to read that, because I'm not going to read that because it was like more than a thousand words come to tumblr if you want an ass kicking who won who's worse just uh say christian's it. worse yeah i agree okay next question okay i have a question about this question and you guys answers to it okay is this a joke answer it's mine is mine is part joke part serious okay chaz is 100 percent serious, serious okay. and i think he should read it okay <laughs> who wants to read the question i will because okay okay <laughs> Writing erotica featuring real people is innately non-con, since the aspect of choice is taken by the writer. The writer chooses, the character obeys. A similar problem arises when trying to make your characters more like people. The more free will they should have, the less they actually do. In this way, E.L. James is remarkably pro-consent, with her writing which features no real characters, and therefore no consent issues stemming from her characters being like real people. Your thoughts? Anon, please! Free will and consent are not the same thing. Uh, haven't you heard of Death of the Author, anyway? Like, okay, your question, it is really funny, but I'll give you a serious answer. Um, your imposition as a consumer and observer of this work also robs characters of their free will, because you make some interpretation of them that is not necessarily, like, explicit. Both you and the author work in tandem, sometimes against each other, as the case may be, like, when we're sort of taking apart these characters and saying, like, well, what's their true intention? It's not what E.L. James intended. Um, we're working either against or for, with each other to bind them to a specific seeming or being consistent with their actions and thoughts in the book. 
And uh, you, the reader, also do this in real life to real people because you have to interpret their actions even though you're not them and you don't have a line in on their thoughts. So by extension of this logic that you portray in your question, you're oppressing me right now by projecting a personality onto me based on the impression I give you. And by the way, this is a side note, but a lot of people think that all I do in real life is scream and I'm a crazy person and I'm like always high on something all the time. But the truth is actually I have like a lot of chronic pain issues and I'm in bed most of the time. So you're wrong. People think um, you're high all the time? Yeah, well not high, but like emotional high. Like, oh. Oh, like always on. But oh, like, okay. I, I only really get like that when I am trying to present, which is what we're doing here. Um, uh, kisses! <laughs> anyway, selfhood. I have a real thought about this, which is that character selfhood is an illusion. But in order to read a story, you need to believe in that illusion. In other words, suspension of your disbelief. So the obvious truth is that it's all projections of the conscious and subconscious conceptions of reality within the author. And then they're playing that out in what they think is um, a reasonably real experience that you can believe. You, and In other words, the suspension of disbelief is continually suspended. Uh, I mean, depending. Depending. <clears throat> yeah, obviously. But I mean, this work in particular. She's trying to... I mean, it's not really true to life. It is a fantasy, but it's like, it's enough of a realistic situation that we can it's invest supposed ourselves. To, it's supposed, you're supposed to feel that this is a like, true to life thing, as opposed to some things that don't. But Yeah, or at least we are supposed to believe that the dynamic is right. Like, just yeah. when you read a fantasy novel, like, if your characters act in believable ways to each other, whatever you dictate that believable way to be, if there's a fantasy aspect, well, you, I was you maintain the disbelief. More specifically, like, there are books that are specifically surreal or abstract where that's not part of the yeah but that wouldn't factor into this discussion yeah. because she's not a surreal writer right. um but i mean how do you account for i mean this is a why do i have question. to account for that <laughs> no no but i mean like for characters in a book where they're explicitly not like even though you're supposed to believe in the characters but they're acting in ways that are not supposed to be true to life like right but then that's explicit because of the way that you frame the book right again exactly like let's not but <laughs> in the way that she's framing the book and we sort of talked about this last night with grammar I'm not going to get into it, but um, your intention dictates the standards by which we need to judge your work, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I think good writers definitely make bad things happen to their characters uh, that they can't control. The characters can't. Writing consent is kind of a whole different ball game because of the way that media consult consumption. <laughs> because of the way that media consumption influences real life, if you don't write consent into really popular works, you're going to um, cause a lot of bad behavior to happen. Uh, whatever Charity Dume answers is the real answer because she actually writes and thinks about this a lot. And Chad has a really long answer, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta dictate your scrolling. You're such a bad scroller. Gotta scrolling. control that scroll. <laughs> so, I have, like, Stop! a pretty long answer here. It's gonna show up on the where you file. Yeah, I know. Don't but not as badly it. as you're screaming. Um, so, Okay, uh, I don't know who you are, and that's fine. Um, <laughs> sorry, that sounds really mean. Yeah. But I meant to say, like, I don't have a name to say, like, X. Here's my answer. Um, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say here, because I'm pretty sure you're not actually saying, like, anything. Um, Charles already sort of pointed out some of the contradictions in your question, which is basically that you're conflating free will and consent, but... Like you say, writing erotica, quote unquote, writing erotica featuring real people and stuff about depriving the people they are based on on their consent. I mean, that's how I'm reading your question. But it's true only in the sense, like, that's true in the sense that they are not consenting to the use of their likeness. But, like, they become characters. So that's a weird gray area because characters inherently don't have free will, like you say. Like, why? But why would they? Like, because they're not real. They're not actual sentient beings that exist in reality they exist as characters um like it's weird and possibly unethical to write erotica featuring real people uh but it's still fictional and that's it's up to artistic license i mean we can be we can go back and forth debating the ethics but have, it's beside the point i have what? a question so just to like reinforce your point if i made a chris evans erotica where it was non-consensual he was like no Charles don't don't touch me and I was like I need your man body like so there's no ethical problems there kind of no wow all right well, go the ahead ethic, you the ethical, taking notes here I mean the ethical no. problem is is it right to 
use his likeness. But once yeah, okay. you're doing it, the ethics of his consent don't matter because he's a character in your Ooh, story. Ooh, see, that was the other thing. And, like, this is a problem I have in real life. Like, again, I joke very much about Chris Evans, but never in a thousand fucking years would I masturbate to the idea of Chris Evans because I have a problem with that. I don't like to use people's images in a way that they personally would not consent to. I have no indication That's... to see that Chris Evans would want to fuck me. So That's your personal ethical code. And so, But nobody though. else is bothered by that? Some people may bothered be. Bothered by what? By the idea that you can like totally just like... No, people jerk people off. Their people do it all the time. All, porn all the time. That's what porn well. is for. Yeah. yeah. Like you're jerking off but, to the idea of dudes someone. Dudes jerking off to girls on fucking Facebook. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, see, that's my problem. Jerking off on Facebook, wrong. Jerking off to porn, okay, because the porn was intended for erotic consumption. But not I mean, that I do... Not the point that is that, that people can take things that are not intended specifically for that and do it anyway. And it's a violation of the consent in that using their likeness in that way, then you don't have their consent to do it. However, once you're doing it, they are not actually there. Right, so it doesn't actually... them as a person, their consent in terms of what you're choosing to think about them is up to you. Like, on, a, on a micro level, there's no way that it could affect them. Right. Like, gotcha. you can affect them when you tell them, I jerked off to you, and that's <laughs> fucked up, and you don't have their consent, and that's sexual <laughs> harassment. However, if you're doing it in your mind, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's an ethical gray area, like I said, like, if you decide to write a fan fiction about... Like, I've seen some of these fan fictions before. They were on oh, SNL yeah, a long time ago. Like, slash fiction between, like, Muse and Radiohead. Like, first of all, <laughs> they're, pub that. they're public figures. <laughs> um, so, like, their likenesses are already out there for the public consciousness to consume as likenesses. That's the whole point of them as bands for, like, the marketing arm of the music part of their labels. It's like, think about them however you want. They're yours. Their music is personal. It's for you. So, like... You taking them into your mind and, and like warping them. Refashioning them. them. Yeah. Their likeness is the thing that you're they you don't have the consent to use necessarily. Gotcha. Them as characters, they're characters. So the ethical the ethics of them, like their actions, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I just that, wanted that's... to have that be clear with a real life example because I feel like that's helpful. So you can continue. Right. So I think that like people first of all, people do this all the time and whether you feel is right or wrong, that's a that's a separate question from you violating their consent, which I don't think you are doing. So that's my answer to that part. But going on, like, then you say that E.L. James is pro-consent because she writes no real characters, which that, like, I don't even understand what you're saying there. I'll quote you. Uh, there are no consent issues stemming from her characters being like real people. That doesn't make any sense. Like, either you got too lost in your own comment to realize that you wrote about, like, actual people in the first lines, like real people, people that exist in reality, mostly I'm assuming people that you would know about, either public figures or, you know, just your friends or something. Um, or are you like trying to intentionally misdirect us? Like, are you conflating real people, i.e. actual living, identifi identifiable human beings in reality with being like a real person? Because they're not the same thing at all. Like how would E.L. James having, uh, sorry, how would E.L. James's fiction having no real char characters, quote unquote, which I take to mean that you, she's not writing characters realistically. Like, they're not acting as people would act. How would that make her be pro-consent? Like, I don't see... That doesn't follow for me. Um, and you didn't actually set up an argument that would make that true in any way. Because, again, first you start off with real people, and then you move to characters that aren't like real people. Um, so, like, all it really means to me t to write a character realistically is to say that like their actions, their intentions, their motivations, whatever, are believable, like Turl said. And especially in the context of the story they are in, like they it it gels with the reality presented within the fiction. So again, their characters, they inherently do not have free will because they do not have will. Like you said, they're creations of the author. But them the author giving the illusion of more free will is not stripping them of consent or giving them consent that doesn't make any sense because they can't do any of those things in the first place um you guys they were just making a joke saying that E.L. James can't write realistic characters I think uh but now actually I wonder if they were Ooh. or if this was a real argument um I feel like it was a little both um <laughs> yeah, I, the think problem they were, is I think that... they were trying to make a point through a jokey question but well just hold on I want to bring it up on my phone I think I think I, th I thought I thought it was just a, a, a mildly amusing joke about how, guys, these aren't these are these these characters are so shitty that it doesn't resemble anything like consent or 
non-consent because yeah. it's just like well what they're what the essence of like if they were making a real argument is like can you take away for consent from something that's not a person because that, they're yeah. not realistic yes it is if you read but, the last sentence that makes it really really clear however chad i don't blame you for being confused because the second sentence in this question completely blows it all to pieces and makes it not make sense so uh, let's not treat it seriously I, f- I feel like we're being mean to this person who's um, just trying to sorry, make a wacky yeah, joke. Yeah, I'm, not to, I'm not trying to, like, call you out, but, like, I just, it didn't, like, I read the question and I was legitimately confused by yeah, what you were trying to say. I think that Chad is taking it too seriously. I think I probably did I too. I couldn't parse it correctly, because I understood <laughs> yeah. what the intent was, but the question did not, like, actually make it sense just didn't. It just doesn't logically follow very well, but I do, I understand what they were trying to say, so I answered with that in mind. Um, so let's continue, please. Uh, scroll. Scroll master. Scroll, scroll master. Scroll. Well, I'm the scroll master, though. Oh, yes. Uh, seems like, uh, so I got an email from Zoentax. Uh, seems like something you all might enjoy so long, and thanks for all the podcasts. Uh, this is a generator. Um, it is basically, it will generate a passage of Fifty Shades of Grey. Can you please click on it so that we can get an example right now? May I read this? You may. He runs his nose along my jaw, and my heart starts pounding in anticipation. He kisses me, dominating, tasting. His tongue invades my mouth, exploring, shallowing my breath. Whoa. My insides liquefying. Whoa. Uh, he softly kisses my cheek, and a pulse of warmth pools inside me. I can hear a song by Talos drifting through the air. How unexpected. Lifting, <laughs> lifting his other hand to cradle my face, his hand tightens around my hair at my nape, fisting his hand. I thought that that said, I can hear a song by Tails drifting through the air. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> On your knees, he murmurs, and I comply immediately. He grins against my neck. Boy, he's so complicated! <laughs> that leather strap! We've never used the leather strap before. I can't imagine how he wants to use that. God, I need you, he whispers, staring intently into my eyes. Abruptly, he's, he grabs me by the shoulders, pushing me against the wall. My breathing is too loud, making me yearn for him, pleasure lancing directly to my groin. His, uh, he runs his hands along my body gently, and my body rises and fills with my arousal. How can his body do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, that was just com- like uh, totally randomly compiled. compiled together. I don't know about randomly. I don't know how it works exactly, but um, yeah, you can just click refresh and get another one and that's get a different, but... Right. Very similar. Um, go back to Doc, Doco, Pot, Picasso, Gender. Pot, Picasso, Gender. Uh, okay. I was just going to read about how it was made. Um, I like the idea that you could put a bunch of these together to just create a horrible, never-ending sex scene. <laughs> it just went on and on and on. <laughs> when will they ever be free? <laughs> I don't know. It's all, it's like all, almost all foreplay. It's true. There's no genital play in there that I can see. There, I think there is in some of them. Like, like he thrusts into me or something like that. It's extreme know. edge play because he keeps pulling back. But, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of us ever being free, do we want to talk about Grey, like, a second right now? We haven't read Grey, it's true. I, I read the first chapter because it was at the end of the first book, and it was horrifying. <laughs> um, the thing that most interested me uh, in about Grey was like, oh, are there going to be some scenes about him jerking off? And I was I was quickly informed that no, there are not, because Elena trained him to never jerk off. Which is a, a legit thing you might do, but if it carries over to the rest of your life, that's probably abuse um, taking hold. Um, <clears throat> and so, like, I wondered, like, why didn't she include that? Um, and there are... I can think of very few depictions in mainstream media of males masturbating and it being seen as sexy or appealing and not like... Yeah, not like a gross habit. A gross, pathetic thing. And maybe this is something for the men's rights activists to um, to get behind. No, because they are basically <laughs> reinforcing the idea that you shouldn't need to jerk off because you should be able to fuck a woman. Like, that's where that comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot of the people, like, that would other... A lot of the, like, red pill people would probably be thinking the same way. Because a lot of it... Yeah, I mean, I think it's a feminist issue in in <laughs> some respects because it's, you know, trying to break down a a, a, a bad thing that masculinity puts on men. Right, a, also, a masculine expectation. Funny, like, yeah. Like poop. Yeah, um, I guess so. But, like, because I guess... I. I, yeah, that's like one thing I want to to ask about. Like, I feel like for women, 
even though it's not depicted very often, I feel like it's always very like personal, um, sexy, taking care of yourself, like um, intimate. Like, you know, yeah, like, like find candles, yourself. Finding yeah. yourself. <clears throat> Where are you getting these from? Because, like, the way that most, I think, masturbation for women especially has been uh, portrayed is through the male gaze. And, like, it was made that way specifically to appeal to men, not to women. And that's the reason that it's so often as, like, a sensual, like, Maybe. activity of a woman enjoying herself. As opposed to... Because men aren't, don't want to see men jerking off. They want to see women masturbating. And so a lot of the time when you see them masturbating in media, it's because the male gaze is at work. Yeah, I. Oh, that's probably why then. It's a complex issue though, because a lot of women aren't inherently comfortable with their bodies. I think. Okay, the statistics have been updated. When I was a teenager, uh, it you would have believed that only about like twenty percent of women or something do it. But right. I guess they've updated it and they find out people lie, of course. So like, mm -hmm. it's really more like seventy percent. There's been but, a lot of. Sorry, go on. But there's no like. But there's like sort of like an aspect of shame about, around it. Like, no, I don't do that. But mm -hmm. like, it's becoming more mainstream to accept it and like there is yeah there's something i think people would have you believe or like sorry the establishment of culture would have you believe that there's something inherently less disgusting about a woman masturbating than a man masturbating actually i can think of a lot of gags about like finding a lady's vibrator or you yeah. know oh, the drawers full of big dildos <laughs> the other thing is that like uh, a lot of um gross out and body humor has to do with expelling fluids, either vomiting or like peeing or pooping. Funny. Yeah, pooping or like ejaculating or right. like squirting. So like <laughs> that's less common because you usually have to actually see something for that. Mm -hmm. But like another thing is that um like Trills was saying, uh, you know, the taboo against masturbation goes back to like the Victorian era mm -hmm. and it, it was imported and it has existed for a really long time. And so for both sexes it was kind of a, a taboo that if you violated that's part of the reason that it was appealing um and then like explicitly like victorian era men were like you know women shouldn't look at porn you've got to we've got to keep all this porn to ourselves we'll mm -hmm. form gentlemen's clubs and yeah. store it away from them um and like there has been a lot of work to reclaim the idea of masturbation for everyone but women specifically because of the way that the taboo was set up to explicitly exclude women from being sexual beings and i think the, uh, that's part of the reason that men like to fantasize about women masturbating because, it, you know, you think like, oh, like women don't masturbate. Like, mm -hmm, yeah. There's no sex in their lives except when they're getting fucked by their boyfriend. <laughs> right. So it's seen as this kind of act of like... And it's a way of removing the man, another man from yeah. having to think about another yeah. man. Yeah. Um, I, I think definitely what you're saying was uh, true about the male gaze. Like most media is made by men they're, and they don't want to see guys masturbating in any context or if they do it's not going to be sexy obviously yeah so and i guess that's just sort of carried over into stuff made by women as well um so for instance why el james wouldn't put it in there at all like um I, I, I mean it would be kind of creepy to read about christian gray masturbating thinking about anna i guess yeah but i feel like that would not be something that she was above with all the other stuff that she yeah, presented think. in the book I actually would like to add another thing that I thought of here. Well, I don't know if we brought it up yet, but there's that, like, okay. <laughs> coincidence or not, you tell me, uh, middle-aged women's stereotypical complaint, and maybe, like, a real one, I don't know, is that husbands will, or not husbands will, like, you know, partners will find other sexual outlets because, you know, if you stay together for a long time in a marriage, your sex life may or may not be perfect. If it's not perfect, one or both of you is going to resort to porn. And if you catch the other person masturbating, you're probably going to get really mad at them because they are not trying to work towards something with you. They're going to waste their energy on something else. I feel like that's a really common thing. Women not liking guys watching porn for that reason. And then the act of masturbation gets tied into that. Like, you coward. Like, you masturbating yeah. coward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, could be another reason she didn't put that in. Right, yeah. yeah. Because, she because it would want... just evoke bad feelings. Yeah. I, I feel like also you know whether maybe just at some point it occurred to her that like oh should like christian masturbate and then either she actually thought like oh i'll do this thing where he was trained not to or it was a justification for why she didn't include it and it's hard to know like right. obviously we shouldn't necessarily try to seek out our intentions but i think it is an important thing to consider because it does frame the issue in different ways something else to consider is that <clears throat> anastasia also does not masturbate unless commanded to yeah yeah, that's true. Yeah, like that was. I was well, that, that. I, I feel like that's part of her sexual repression. Maybe. 
Um, Maybe she's repressed so much that she can't have either character masturbating. I think it might also be like she wants these characters to only experience pleasure with each other. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I think that's a big deal of it. Yeah, and it kind of ties into what I was saying about the husband-wife thing. I mean, because you have to wonder, like, what does E.L. James think about men? Like, does she think that men are jerking off all the time in private? Or, like, does she think that that is something they do, but Christian's not the type of guy that would do that, but also there's this thing that makes him not do it explicitly? Or, like, he would otherwise maybe normally masturbate or something? It could just simply be that, of course, she may be lampshading it with this external rationalization, but... For, you know, a powerful man, like we keep right. mentioning the MRIs, like, he fucks women. He doesn't jerk off. Like, mm-hmm. sorry, I was yes. going to <laughs> talk about it. That's gross. Um, yeah, He's sorry. That's stable of women is disposal anytime. See, that's what they call good radio. I was like, I was, <laughs> I was making a funny motion with my hands that I don't think I would even do this if I was going to do this to somebody. <laughs> what, you take both your hands, make the OK sign with both of them, and put them on top of each other. The perfect form. <laughs> it was so dumb. We're all doing it now. <laughs> now we're all. <laughs> it's really funny how that happens. Um. Anyways, where were we with all this? Well, I think that's probably all we have to say. Well, no, I think yeah, Jane has more well, to say. Well, um, yeah. I was just going to say that you may have noticed, if you've read anything that I've written or talked about, <laughs> that I have a weird fixation with male masturbation. And I wonder if I'm one of the few women who does. Can I be real with you here? I actually am one of the... I'm trying to think of a cool way to phrase this. Um, I don't have inherent disgust at the idea of a guy doing it. Like I feel like I feel like a lot of a lot of sitcoms. Um, I may just be rehashing a point we made earlier. Like there's a lot of sitcoms that have like, oh, I walked, I walked in on him, jerking off, waka waka. Yeah. Like in the wife being like disgusted or like really having to deal with this. But like I feel like I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Um. And I feel like they're like I feel like you know if a, if a, there would be a portrayal of a man walking in on a woman he'd be like oh hey can yeah I, that's exactly can what I happens. join it <laughs> like that's exactly what happens most of the time it's the like we were saying even when it's not even a significant other when it's like a woman walking in on a man there's the implication that it's like sad lonely like or like I caught or, you yeah. yeah I also feel like it's kind of a sh- um, um, shrewish depiction of women it, it is. is jealousy uh, and like. How dare you do something without me? I mean, it's jealousy, and there's also the puritanical aspect of, like, you know... Let me lay this on you. (laughs) Totally hypothetical. Totally not based in real life. Let's say you date two different guys in your life. Of course, maybe you've dated more than that. I know I have. But let's say one of your guys um, isn't healthy... Doesn't have a healthy sex life with you. You walk in and find him jerking off, you will be mad. No question. He's not talking to you about what he's doing. You guys aren't communicating. Uh, It's sort of, okay, it's basically a version of what I said earlier, husband-wife thing. On the other hand, let's say you have a boyfriend, which it has, or a penis-having partner, um, who you do talk about sex with. You have the understanding that you both can have time to jerk it off. (laughs) And, uh, And you do. And maybe sometimes you find each other and you're like, oops. Like, I feel like that's, that first situation I described is really enabled by a lot of the expectations that people put on each other in heterosexual relationships, probably gay ones too. Um, and that's why it is so often portrayed the way it is, because I think a lot of people have unhealthy sex lives. I mean, for fuck's sake, everybody loved this book. What does that <laughs> say about you? <laughs> you, listener of this podcast, yeah, you. who loves this book. <laughs> You f- you loved it. Explain yourself. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm trying to say as a enlightened adult is that I can see that jerking off by itself is not something I should get mad about. It's the context in which the jerking off happens. I believe it's very very rarely is it presented in a context where you can actually be okay with that as a heterosexual woman walking in on a man who's jerking off. There was a, a subplot in... Sex in the City about this. I've seen a lot of hmm. Sex in the City because my mom used to watch it on when it came out in syndication <laughs> and like heavily edited. <laughs> I just remember one time they were talking. There was an episode about um, fuck buddies, and so and it was changed to sex friend, <laughs> <laughs> and like you could see the clearly see like the dubbing was off, and I just thought it was hilarious. It's really funny. Um, but anyway, there was a there was a um, a long. Well, not long. There was a subplot where Charlotte, the brunette, uh, 
her husband was not having couldn't have sex with her, but he was jerking off like secretly in the bathroom to porn, and she was like super. Um, and so that, yeah, that's that's exactly the kind of thing that's like. But there was no, as far as I know, healthy depiction of that sort of thing happening. Yeah, that's not cool. Well, if we had more healthy depictions in media, maybe it would be more exciting. Exactly. Okay. So that's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The, uh, end. the end. The I end, guess. Is, I guess. Weren't I you going to say some stuff about gay porn? Isn't it more... Isn't male masturbation more encouraged in, like, well, obviously. Fendom or stuff well, like that? That's Fendom, um, it's... I mean... Like... Like... <laughs> like, jerk off for me, you worm! Like... <laughs> in the kind of thing that I would do? No, not as soon, yes. just in general. Oh, okay, well... <laughs> But see, but that's you. But we we have both admitted that that's not something we would we would find gross ourselves. But we also don't like Fifty Shades of Grey. Maybe this isn't a common thing. Uh, also, I wasn't admitting that I was femdom in that sentence because I'm not. Okay. By I don't the way. think anyone was. Yeah, I don't know. It, just, it sort of sounded like I was commiserating with you on more than one. Level. Um. Yeah, I mean, I agree, and I but I feel like that is an aspect of humiliation. Do this pathetic thing for me. Hmm. Um. But then, what about the gay thing? Because that doesn't always factor in. I feel like that. I feel that's, like that's, I think that's totally a, different. And yeah, I think that's a that's different. Much more equal footing, and like you know, but I, I also feel like Maybe. it's almost always. I mean, there are tons of like vi- of like sexy videos of guys jerking off, but those are specifically for they're usually gay targeted men. at gay men. Yeah, exactly. It's either gay men or femdom. I don't know if there are. I don't know if there <laughs> is. Are you sure? Maybe I know. Okay, tell I just, me. but not like on purpose. <laughs> I never would. Um, <laughs> I'm editing this out. I'm just being silly. It's my funny idea of a joke. Uh, my two funny ideas of jokes are pretending that I've never seen porn and also implying that I would force other guys to do oral sex on me. Um, what? How do you follow a sentence like that? <laughs> uh, so I've seen what I know of videos where male masturbation is lauded and not a thing of disgust would be edging and gay porn that's it that's all i've seen and the edging thing usually has a femdom aspect to it is that directed towards femdoms though or is it directed towards males looking for femdom porn but if you were a femdom and had a fetish for it rather than just working as a dom you also might like those things i feel like that would be i mean yeah, you might, but I feel like... But then you might not. It would be heavily framed around the lady and not the man doing the submission. It's usually heavily framed on dick, from what I... Really? Yeah. Like, that's the focus. It's not her going like, yeah, like, die! And she's, like, off in the corner and he's just like... Or something. <laughs> like, But yeah, there's, like, there's like dick. Like, the huh. focus is on dick. I feel like you gotta show me this. Okay. Or just tell me how you found it, and I'll I'll um, I'll, I'll find it too. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, uh, the internet. Well, I, okay. I'm not saying you have to say it now. I'm just saying, like, what did you search for, it, Trills? I don't uh, fucking it, care. Trills, okay, me. it's fine. I'm not going to judge you. No, for it's being, okay. I've been to way worse places, probably, or maybe probably. not. But if not, it's fine. Whatever. No. As a yeah. final, uh, as a final qualification, um, I don't like. I personally don't have a very good grounding in like um like queer studies and stuff so i don't really i don't know if i can speak to the dimensions that surround masturbation for men in like explicitly gay porn or even for women um in uh like lesbian porn so i don't i feel like there's probably more to it than just a positive look outlook on it although i bet there's been a lot of reclamation of the activity in the gay community uh, from being like you know like a, a weak pathetic thing that you do alone or something um i mean i know it's definitely like a, a thing that partners you together like it's a partner activity for people and it even is in some heterosexual relationships mm-hmm. but that being said i don't know how the power dynamics work there for gay relationships because there is replication of a lot of heteronormative um power structures in other relationships even in gay communities yeah, that's it's not true. explicitly always what's happening but especially in the earlier days of it where a lot of probably like you know the ideas would have come from and filtered down through well i'll just step in and say an easy example would be like butch and femme or like right "Mm, exactly sorry to use this word sissy and butch guy or bear guy like like twinks and stuff yeah twinks versus macho dudes leather daddies like that um sort of like 
binarism, yes, it's present. It has been present. That's kind of like the consequence of coming from a heterosexual society. Mm -hmm. I think we see people moving more away from that now because you have more yeah, non-binary trans or like trans but don't transition all the way, trans people who are okay with not having like the cis genitalia and keeping it that way. Like I see that a lot now and I think it's a good thing. But aside from it being a good thing, um it's still very nascent and that's really it's nascent. that's yeah. really I think more what's more important to keep in mind is that like although there has been a lot of like, you know, progressive attitudes about those sorts of things it's for me in particular because i don't know much about it because i'm not gay and i don't like i said i don't really have very much of a background in queer studies i don't know very much about the history and like how things have been framed and what the critical like theories on the like male gaze and stuff in those things are um so to, to just say that it's positive, that's probably a little dangerous because I don't know that that's true. I see. No, not maybe not positive, but I just... It's definitely more of an activity that people enjoy and is looked as something that's not necessarily explicitly taboo as it is in right. tip, like, yeah. historically for hetero uh, things. I thought of two things I'm going to be very brief about. I got nervous because I was feeling put on the spot about things that I've watched in the past for porn because I'm in a relationship now and it's weird to talk about it. Um, but, uh, I do remember the terms that one could use to find those kinds of things, which is tease pornography. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, cock tease. Like, it's specifically centered on cock. Hmm. j and o cock. But, um... I wonder if that... Is it POV? E you can probably put POV in to get a hit. Now, however, the hand that will be the jerking off is often not the man's hand. So, right. there is that. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because uh, sex I is very complicated, and there's many uh, there's many issues around it. My point is, should there have been should Christian jerk off? Should send Christian in your jerk off? Well, okay. Me. My my thought is that yes, there should have been mm -hmm. <clears throat> to present it to ladies as hey, this can be cool and not super gross and shameful and like a thing where he's betraying you by giving himself pleasure that's not with your vagina. Um, depending on how you. you feel about it, I guess, but it's, um... Shit, I remembered another keyword. I'm so sorry. Edging. That's another solo you said that activity. Already. Yeah, you said that already. I did? Okay. okay. Um, but, uh, would it be really weird to, like, s watch him looking at pictures of Anastasia sleeping <laughs> and jerking off? Yes, that okay. would be weird and Yeah, creepy. sleeping. Yeah. Uh, I think... Okay, my, first, my question is, is there a way to keep his powerful mystique or whatever, charm, uh, and have him jerk off? Yeah, I think so. I That's what I'm saying. I don't think it has to necessarily be a shameful thing no, where absolutely. you're demeaning yourself. Well, or... I'm just saying, like, how would how would it be presented, like? I mean, that's that's the thing. Yeah. Like, how do you break out of the well, mold that's been established? Well, the you only way that I can see it I is, think like... The, I think the word just, choice just, you use, yeah. the way you frame it... The way you do it, it is the, just to do it. Like, like, if you don't just say he sniveled and jerked I mean, it's, his it's, pathetic it's the little dick way. until, <laughs> some, it's the until way, a few like, measly grams of jizz <laughs> splitted out onto his his thigh, and it was and, then he, and it quickly cooled and got sad. It quickly Christian, evaporated. Christian whimpered and said, I'm alone. <laughs> But like, if it was he kept, like he kept his tiny jizz droplets in a tiny jar that he kept under his bed to remind himself of the time. Every time that he had jerked off and was weak. So, but it's the same thing as like when you frame sex. Like it can be funny can be gross or gross sex? or sensual. And yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's just I how see. You... So, but like the approach has to be something like I couldn't stop talking about Anastasia. I wanted to respect her and yet also expel my needs in a way that was mature. So okay, I if I were to... I, if I, I were to, to expel my, my fluids okay. in a way that was mature. And if I were to do the <laughs> same thing that I just did, yeah. but with a, a good thing... Oh, okay, I'm gonna improv this. Okay. okay. Um, like, I, I, I imagined Anastasia the way she crossed her legs, <laughs> and I gently rubbed myself thinking of, <laughs> of her legs sprawling over my lap. <laughs> Okay, yeah, see, no, that's okay. But, like, still, like, gently rubbed myself, like, still these things. I don't know. Or, like, you know, I... I, <laughs> I powerfully took my dick in both yeah, hands because it was my huge. I grasped my cock between my hands and slowly <laughs> began... <Rolled> like a Play-Doh. <laughs> like a strip of Play-Doh. I imagined it was some dough I was playing with, about to make like, a fresh pizza. As though I was punching down a rising loaf of bread, I repeatedly assaulted my manly cock.
my ejaculate sprayed across the room. <laughs> if you want to look for like depictions of of non pathetic jerking off, please look for my future work. <laughs> yeah, or your excellent work. Uh, that's a robot. But it's not. Oh, okay. So it gets into the problem of the other hand now. Yeah. That we so. It's like. You know, now we have to worry about, about. when Big Blast is jerking off with his robot hand. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> How does like he a whole... feel about it? Well, he's controlling. Okay. Yes, he's controlling. Okay, I'm, I'm he's joking. controlling this hand. I'm joking. It's the main part of my book. No, but I mean. Manual of Red by Phoenix Slater. Find it on Amazon. Um, <laughs> is a robot AI. Is controlling a robot AI. AI. So it is essentially a different person and right. not yeah. master. It's a, it's a, this, the hand has no, different No, but I was thinking more of like if in Big Boss's mind. Sometimes when he uses the other hand, he thinks to himself, it's a different person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Big Boss has much of a sex life anymore, guys. And if he did, he, never had he has much of a fucking Kaz and Ocelot to J.O. his D. <laughs> I won't even accept, I won't even Base. accept Quiet as Canon. All of Mother Base is there to J.O. Yeah, they'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like, Boss! They've become the ultimate Jack off Crystal Warriors. Boss, do you have time to let me jerk you off? They boss, let's go are on the mission. ultimate Jack off Crystal Warriors. They sit around on the platforms. Okay, guys, time to energize our crystals. Yeah. Well, you Boss, can't. You can't just say me, that. Please. You can't just say that and not bring up our Jo Crystal Warrior concept. Boss, jerk with me, please. Yeah, look for Jo Crystal Warriors after I fucking sit down and write it. <laughs> yeah, it's a concept that's good. Let's not talk about it anymore because it would be spoilers. All right, and I think that's probably enough for this episode. Yeah, yeah. it definitely is. <laughs> okay, right. well, so. Well, uh, maybe. We might come back. We maybe. might. We would not. like to, but we're kind of we're slackers. Many of us are. Yeah. It's mostly no, okay. me. And mostly me. Don't include you us in that fucking description. Whoa. No, I'm just kidding. It's me. Unless it wasn't clear. No, Chad's not slacking. Chad's at grad school. Cherry Doom and I are both working on a project together, and I have my job. own. It's actually hard. I did know, not manage to do we, it when I was. We feel the need to always record together, which makes sense since we're in the same city. Right. But before we could just set a time and a date, and then like yeah, get we on could our do that. Now. I could like sit in my bed. Yeah. And set a time and a date. I know, but it's so no, but easy I mean, to record together. But I mean, like like getting together as opposed to like I, just, yeah, I suppose so. Like okay, that's the that's the trade off. It makes editing easier, but it makes scheduling harder. Anyways. This is not. Should we sign yeah. off? What are we gonna yeah, say? We should sign um, off. Later's baby. Later's baby. Uh, maybe we should do something different. This is the last episode um, for a holy cast, probably. Okay. What about a song? Just like do like the 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 something, and I'll try to say some nice things. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We read all three books. They weren't good, but you came and listened to us even though you didn't have to. And we really appreciate that. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for all these listener questions. And you might see us later, but maybe you should encourage us if you really want that. But of course I won't put all the pressure on you, our listeners. It's obviously up to us as responsible adults to schedule our time and think about a topic that we want to talk about. Anyways, Laters Baby. Laters Baby, maybe. Maybe. Oh, Laters Maybe. Laters Maybe. Oh, let's do that. Okay. Laters Maybe. maybe.